Matt Zoe, and I'm going to take you through a project of my latest track on Anjuna Beats called Love Songs. So let's get started. Yeah, Love Songs was one of the first tracks on my album that I started. I guess uh, I was playing around with the sample for a long time. Lately I've been singing love songs by myself. Yeah, so I've done quite a little bit to these vocals. First of all, I've got some reverb, which is adding some space. Lately I've been singing the song. And I want to put that at the front of the chain because I wanted to make it feel like it's part of the sample, not something that was put in after the fact. So, yeah. That's why I did that. And then here I just added a little hint of comb filter just to um, give a little bit of movement in the high end, but not too much. It's like set to 50%. So it just adds a little bit of movement that you hardly even notice. Lately I've been singing love songs by myself. So yeah, without it you really, you notice it, but you don't really notice it when it's in there. Lately I've been singing love songs by myself. And yeah, here I just uh, took out a little bit of low end uh, with a shelf. I didn't want to take it out completely with a, uh, with a cut because, um, yeah, I wanted to keep some of the body of the vocal in there and make it feel more like a live vocal and yeah this is just to take out a little bit of sibilance it's just a dynamic eq it's just a little bit um of subtle correction there okay so after that it's a tiny bit of saturation uh just to make it a little bit less clean and then this is a, a effect rack I made um, that mimics the Dolby Type A effect, which is a, a hardware unit that um, used to be very popular, probably still is, um, although I can't find them on reverb these days. Um, it basically is like one of the first examples of multiband compression. Uh, the way it works is it has, yeah, so you have a multiband uh, effect rack and in each of these bands is a compressor um, except on this lower mid band there's an envelope follower so when the low mids get loud it actually reduces the amount of compression on the other bands so it's sort of like a, a smart multiband compressor in a way but this is a way to get that multiband compression sound without losing too much dynamics because whenever there's a lot of dynamics in the low mids, the, the compression in the highs is lower. So it's only compressing when there's uh, not so much volume. So yeah, it just adds a little bit of um, smashing in the background to sort of bring up the overall energy when the vocal is sort of uh, lacking energy, it sort of reinforces the energy underneath that. And here you can see I've duplicated some things over and put uh, delay in, and stuff on it. So yeah, that was really, you know, the focal point of the whole track is really that vocal, especially for the breakdowns and the intros. So, yeah, uh, made sure that that was an important uh, part of it. As you can see, I copied the vocal over to a new channel for the drop because I wanted to change a few things about the drop versus the intro. So, first thing you'll notice I completely cut out the low end. Instead of like here, there's a nice gradual slope. 
I just completely cut everything below 200 hertz because during the drop there's so many other elements to compete with. You'll also see I duplicated the audio in certain places and added delay. Similar way to here, just a different type of compression after. So yeah, let's go over the other elements in the drop. Actually, before that, let's start with the intro. Because there's some interesting other elements in here. For instance, let's see. Yeah, this is just a, a sort of droney pad that I took out, out of one of my random sound design sessions. And I just started looping that and playing the vocal over it and then playing chords over it. And that's really how the tune started. So it's a pretty important piece of the puzzle. And there's a few things that I actually recorded live instead of just using soft synths. So this is a organ recording. Um, a friend of mine let me borrow his organ for the indefinite future. <laughs> So I recorded some organ parts for this track. And I didn't play it in key, I just played the chords and then chopped it up. So this is what it sounds like. And I, the thing I love about this and the way I chopped it up is that it creates all those little weird artifacts that add randomness and human, a human quality to everything. Because it's a live recording, it's never going to be completely perfect, which is exactly what I wanted for this. I didn't want it to be completely on, on the grid and everything feeling, you know, really unhuman. And yeah, these guitar parts, which I actually recorded a long time before I started this track, and they just fit so well because I, yeah, I had an idea in my head for something else for this, and then it just worked really well with this. Someone asked where I got the vocal from. Uh, it's a track by Eddie Holman called Lately I've Been Singing Love Songs, I think. Yeah, you can find it. And at the end of the track, it just breaks down into an acapella, acapella which is what you're hearing. Yeah, sometimes Sausage Fattener <laughs> comes in handy. Yeah, so these are all the effects that I have for like the intro and the build up. And some of these effects are actually just percussion, percussive stuff that I put in the wrong group. So yeah, there's like reverse crashes and stuff and risers and then this tambourine loop which sort of comes in slowly. But yeah, this serum thing just providing the sort of kick element. Sorry, that's the 
that's the lasers, and then this is the kick thing, I think. So, yeah, all done from scratch. Yeah, if I solo some of these elements, you'll hear that a lot of them are actually just mostly mono, like this one, like these two, which is just chops of those recordings that I showed you. Um, so this is the organ, and this is the piano one, just basically chopped up to the beat. So that's providing a lot of the strength of the mono signal. What else have we got? Yeah, when I solo a lot of these things, like there's it's not they're not very wide themselves. Like all these things have a pretty solid mono signal. And that's because some I'm not spreading everything to its complete maximum. You see, this is completely mono, this whole unison thing, and then this is just spread a little bit. So it's only a, a little bit wide. And yeah, I think that's the only synth part in this section. Everything else is audio. And then there's this thing. Let's see, see if it works, because it's rolling cloud. Ah, yeah. And yeah, and then I have some pianos that come in, and as again, you'll hear, they're completely mono. So, um, yeah, here I've done a few things. First of all, see what I did there is I completely limited the width on this because I wanted this to be a, a focal point for this section. And you'll hear that the transients are blurred a little bit, and what's doing that is this plugin, M Transformer. And I'm not really transforming it uh, frequency wise, just level wise. Um, so, only slightly, uh, and yeah, phase wise as well and some pretty drastic EQing before it, but what it does is basically blur transients a little bit. You'll hear when I take it off. They're just harder and it, and it sounds different. And this M transforming, you can really mold the character of the sound really easily. So I love, I love this plugin for stuff like this. So the question is, since everything's so mono, why does it sound like it's got space and it's, it doesn't sound like a really narrow mix? Well, let's see what, what isn't mono. So here's a little sound design element drone thing that I added in there to sort of give it energy. Um, and yeah, it doesn't have to be too wet or spaced out. It could be something really dry and aggressive. Yeah, I guess this is just uh, that droney thing from the intro, but with a really <laughs> aggressive sidechain on it. By the way, speaking of which, all of this stuff, the bass, the synths, everything is in one group that does all the sidechain. Oh yeah, and there's a, <laughs> a little UAD plugin on top of it just to give it some warmth. Um, so I'm using FM8 for the sub. So you can hear that the sub isn't a clean sine wave, it's actually um, a Reese, basically. Um, it's just two sine waves detuned a little bit and with some feedback. And yeah, it has a nice round full character because of it. I think this trash is, yeah, just to add some clip control to the sub. And this is just to take out any mids that's still there that like is clashing with the other elements. If it was back in, you'd hear it would like sound a lot more muddy. I'll play it with everything.
Yeah, so it just basically uh, lets everything work. Because the ba bass isn't supposed to stand out too much. It's supposed to be a supportive element. It's supposed to sound... You're not n meant to notice it, even. Um, so that's the sub layer. And then I have some harmonics being taken uh, care of by this razor. So what's it doing? Okay, nothing, nothing crazy, just something subtle to give it a little bit of body. Because on its own, it didn't have the same amount of energy. It also gives it a bit of width as well. So, yeah, mainly it's just to give width. Because all the synth parts are so narrow, like, there needs to be other stereo parts that um, make up for that. So, the bass part is one of those. So, in the breakdown, I really wanted there to be a nice piano part and just have that play on its own, and then everything comes in, sort of like a, an orchestra, you know? So, um... Yeah, I just recorded that piano part and made it more of a focal point, put it in its own channel and did a bunch of stuff to it, including using this, just using this section here, just to give it a little bit of blurriness. <laughs> So yeah, there's a phaser in here. It's probably this flanger, actually. It's not a phaser. Yeah, I think that was all contact. I don't think that was an actual piano. Um, but I, what I did is I played it super slow because I'm actually really shit at piano. So I played it about 100 BPM and then, yeah, sped it up later after the fact and pitched it up. Because I wanted it to sound more like a sample than a synth, so... Yeah, I did this in a separate project, just to make sure that um, it didn't sound too much like a contact patch. And you know, doing things like transposing it up after the fact, and yeah, just like messing with it as an audio sample, just helps give it that effect of feeling like a live sample. Because it gives it those little weird artifacts and intricacies that an actual audio sample would have. Yeah, little details like that are super important. Um, you know, just like taking the low end out before a drop or before a moment, just to add emphasis to when it does happen. The thing that gives this track away completely, the thing that gives away the source of the inspiration for this track has to be these. These little snare hits, which I made from scratch, trying to emulate the track that I was sort of uh, inspired by for this track which was Roger Sanchez, Another Chance. If you go listen to that, you'll hear those do do before the drops. And yeah, I wanted, I, I wanted to, to have that element in there. So I made these little drum hits, and originally I just had them by themselves, and after some thought, I realized that to make it a little bit different from that Roger Sanchez tune, I'll add these little reverse hits to them so it it just has a little bit more movement and impact versus just this so it sort of rushes into them yeah the drop obviously has a lot more going on the second drop I mean than the first drop so um, yeah I layered it accordingly so this is a whole new uh, patch, just um, without the filter over it, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, um, not spreading it too much. Don't want to spread it all the way because then it would just lose focus. And in addition to uh, all these other synth parts, I had added some little details that I once had in the first drop, but I decided 
No. I want to keep those for later to as a special little treat. <laughs> Because you know you wanna you wanna build up to things. You don't wanna just give everything away at once. Yeah, and there's a bunch of stuff on this as well, just to make sure it's a little bit f***ed up. I don't like it when things sound too clean or perfect. So even when it's super melodic and nice and uplifting like this, just Messing up sounds a little bit, just to give them a little bit of character and not make them sound so uniform. Just adds a lot. Let's see, let's look at the drums. I haven't even start. I haven't even looked at the drums yet. So with most of my projects, I do the kick and snare or clap, or actually just the kick and snare from sn from scratch. And I'll use kick two for that. Here. I'm just using kick two for the transient. So I'm just using one of the standard clicks that come with it and yep, making my own little pitch curve to go along with it. And I added the sub with serum, just a, a sine wave uh, with a pitch envelope on it and some attack to make room for the transient and yep. So the benefit of doing it in two separate channels is that you can then play with the sub or the weight of the kick separately from the transient and then you can think about the transient uh, tail separately which just helps for mixing um, and yeah on here I have this uh, Saturn patch that I made that basically you can yeah mess with the transient in ways that make them really like stand out and emphasize what was already there and yeah here's just taking out uh, some frequencies in the mids that were troublesome. And yeah, the clap, I didn't want to stand out too much in this. I didn't want it to be like a bit, you know, I just wanted it to be like the thing that holds it together, not a big standout clap. So it's a pretty understated element. So you see the clap is a layer of two things, the transient and then the tail. The transient I took from some sample pack. And it's got a little bit of reverb on it, just to give it some extra tail. Okay, um, yeah, uh, just layering some loops at this point and some hi-hats. Yeah, here, for the, when it first drops, it's just a kick, and then hi-hats come in, then loops come in, and then, yeah, for the second drop, it's all everything together and some, some extra stuff. So this is a yeah a little loop I made. Another hi hat that I made. I think this was with Superior Drummer and like Serum or something. Yeah, some little percussive hits. Nothing too crazy. Really wanted this just to feel like a standard housey rhythm without going too crazy. On my master is. Sats and Bus, which is sort of adding a little bit of console emulation. Um, you'll see all the different buses here, and you can have a different instance of Satsun on each of these individual groups, and then sort of do summing mi mixing in that. But I don't use it as a summing mixer. I just use it for the saturation. This isn't doing anything. This is just making sure nothing crosses zero, but I've mixed this one in such a way that you'll see it doesn't really clip at all before the limiter. So 
so this isn't doing anything. This is a, a, a brick wall limiter clipper. Um, so it, I could take this out, it doesn't do anything. So yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.